Hi, now I'm in the paint booth and I just want to give you a quick tour around and show you some of the features that you may want to incorporate in your own paint booth. Here we have two airbrushes set up with a double manifold, one that I can use for uh, acrylic paints, another one that we can use for lacquer paints. The acrylic paint uh, one is an external mix. I find that it's much better. It's a little more open and shoots the acrylics a little bit better. The uh, lacquer based brush that I use is an internal mix brush double action and it works equally well but it works better for the uh, lacquer based paints. I normally use Flocal um, and either Poly S or Badger Model Flex uh, in, the, in the acrylics. Flocal for the lacquer and Model Flex or Poly S for the uh, acrylic paints. And that's what we're going to use today for starting off is the Flocal paint. And then we'll give you a tour around some of the rest of the paint booth. This is our airbrush holders and double manifold. I also keep a pair of scissors hanging around. They're usually handy for using. One of the main things that I really like are the Badger uh, paint mixers. These are absolutely fantastic for sticking down in the bottles and mixing. Uh, they're technically what the paint industry calls a disperser. They don't actually have a blade on. They have kind of a flat wavy service and it does a beautiful job of mixing paints. I also keep a holder here for open jars so that they can't get tipped over and I have an eyedropper of uh, lacquer thinner or water uh, whichever I'm using as a thinner at the time that I can drop just a few in a few drops in uh, to use as thinners. Here we see the filtering system easily removable so I can change them out. There's a baffling system behind that and then a furnace cage blower behind that that moves a great deal of air so I always have air coming through from the back side of me and the paint tends to stay uh, out in front of me and not where I don't have to breathe it. The rest of the booth has some convenience items like screwdrivers and pliers etc and on around to the side then I have some baskets and some cleaning materials all within easy reach and that's the key to making a paint booth work is to have everything within an easy reach. All right, now we're ready to paint, and uh, what I'm going to use here is the Flocal. In this case, we'll use the Tuscan, which will give us a nice dark red brick on the front. I almost always, when I first open the paint can, uh, mix it with the Badger mixer. And I've already done that, so I've kind of cheated. We'll make sure that our airbrush is working, and it is. I keep a clean bottle of Diasol on there all the time, mainly for clean outs and get rid of whatever excess is in that and into our paint. I have modified the cap on this airbrush. This is the standard uh, Pache cap attachment, but I've taken the uh, Pache bottle cap off and put a Flocal bottle cap on, so I simply just stick right down the bottle and start painting. A lot of painters don't like to do that. For me it's convenient, so I just go for it. I'm going to spray this building first of all from the bottom, looking up. The brick detail in DPM buildings is absolutely fantastic, so you've got to go from every angle in order to get down into the groove. So I went from the left that time, go from the left on those bricks, come from the bottom. Now I come from the right side, and then I'll come from the top. And lots of times I find it necessary to come back then and look straight on at it and spray again and just make sure that I've got it all. If there are any light spots, I'll come back now and touch them up. And if this looks pretty good, maybe a little light on top of those cornice pieces. Actually, all I'm after is the brick, so that's pretty good. My red will act kind of as a primer now for my acrylics when I go to hand paint this front. Here we have our two buildings ready to go. Uh, on end scale, I do paint the inside of the building black because the walls are so thin that any lighting you put in might shine through the walls. So a little black paint, a little Krylon uh, blackens them and makes them look much better. On our HO building, we'll peel off the masking from our spraying of the hard fired brick from the front. Just like opening a Christmas present. Let's see what it looks like. Looks pretty good. Now, the walls on the side really are kind of shiny. And although they're close to a brick color that you might use in your area or find in your area for common brick, we're going to need to paint them. So we'll make some more frisket mask, just a little masking tape on the front of a paper towel again, and this time we'll use the red line of the hard fired brick as our line to tape to. 
So we'll just start masking that off, get it all taped up all the way around the front of the building. Fit it in nice and tight. We don't want any paint to slop over or to spray back in underneath all of that brick. A little extra piece to finish out with. And we'll cut off the excess. Wrap it back up like a Christmas present. This one's a little easier because all we have to do is wrap the front itself. Now we do have a problem, however, in the fact that now the paint will be able to come into the inside of the building and may hit on the inside of the walls, and I really don't want it to do that. So what we'll do is we'll start taking some masking tape and tape off the insides of the windows themselves. I've masked off the front, exposed the common brick, masked off the windows so that they uh, won't have paint flowing on the inside of this. And now it's ready to go back to the paint booth and spray off the common brick color. Alright, now we're ready to spray on our common brick color. And again, from the bottom, we're going to spray it from the top angle, the left side, right side, every angle that you can think of to get this brick sprayed uh, around in to catch all the details. Now we're going to also spray the chimneys up here on top and again we have to get all the angles on them as well. So we'll spray them from all four sides. I'll spray the back of the uh, cat piece, the cornice piece, and as well then I'll come back and spray the rest of the details of the roof itself. Alright, now we're ready to start painting our building with the hand painting. I've made a block of wood here that has some paint brushes in it, holes just drilled along it. I have several different types of brushes that I like. Rounds, uh, some flats where they have only one dimension. And then also the, my favorite kind are the kind that are cut on an angle. Where they're flats but they have an angular uh, cut to them. They do the details I think around the windows much better. I bored a hole in it to hold my paint bottles, hold several different sizes. I have a tendency to knock them over when I'm not paying attention or when I'm trying to concentrate on the building itself. So it just makes it a little safer around the workbench. I use several different types of paints. I go to Hobby Lobby, Michaels, the Hobby Shop, look around. These are some of the ceramic paints or the paints that are made for the crafters. Uh, you can also go to the gaming department or the fantasy game uh, military department. Uh, this is one brand that I use from uh, the Hobby Shop. Uh, for the gamers. And of course we always use some of the favorites, uh, Poly S from Flocal. I, uh, I like Badger a great deal for airbrush work. Um, and this is, these are the paints that we're going to actually use on the windows themselves. We'll use some uh, light ivory paint to actually paint the window detail. And then we'll open our package, our Christmas present again here in a second, and see what it looks like. And it's looking pretty good. We got the nice fired brick on the front. All right, this video clip is going to be sped up quite a bit, but it'll show you exactly how we did paint the windows. The, catching this detail is absolutely the easiest part of the kit because it's such a great um, casting. Detail is easy to catch with this chiseled edge, edge brush, and you can literally paint these windows. Not quite as fast as we're showing you, but darn close. We actually painted this building in about 15 minutes for all the windows and doors. And we're just about ready to finish up this top window here. And we'll move down to the store display window and uh, the store front. Again, the details are raised so nicely that you can just catch them with the edge of that brush. And the paint flows just right on. A little bit of mistake we rubbed off there. Not too hard to do. As we come down this side now, we're going to make a little mistake down here at the bottom of the post in just a second as we begin to fill in the panel down at the bottom. And we're going to slop it over on the post right there. A little mistake, so we go for a little water. Rinse it off. Blot it. And we paint the detail right back in. We're right back in business just that quickly. Flip it around to the side window. Again, the great, great raised detail makes it awfully easy 
to paint these windows. Just that quick, we're done.